to combat the mirror, uh, but uh, Rod Delver sort of fallen out of favor, actually. Oh. Um, the last couple opens, especially, there hasn't been a, a, a ton of Rod Delver. There's been way more Esper Stoneblade style decks that have m much more varied casting costs, moving back to Jace decks, uh, and so the, the uh, being only being able to really reliably counter one and two mana spells really hampered the deck. All right. Can All right, Caster, so you're seeing the champ on the left. Yep, the champion from this morning there on the left, Carl Dillahay, also a uh, former Nationals uh, top eight competitor. Kenny Caster on the right finished second place at uh, the Grand Prix in Indianapolis earlier uh, in the year. It was this year, correct? When he uh, lost to Tom Martell in the finals. Ah, uh, okay, yep. Uh, with Rug Delver, as a matter of fact. Carl uh, appears to have won the die roll and is leading with Missy Rainforest into Tropical Island. Now, both these players are X and 1, correct? Yes, both these players are X and 1, um, and so the, the losers of this match will likely not be making the top 8, while the other remaining player will be playing their win and in next round. Or uh, be able to ID. Or be able to ID, depending they're... on the map. Uh, I didn't see how many um, X and 1s there were. Sure. This is only an 8 round tournament, so, um, and, and I don't know how the math is going to work out. I'm no Matthias Hunt when it comes to tiebreaker math, so. Or Todd Anderson. Or for Todd that Anderson for that. Well, I'm, I, well, I'll leave that one alone. Actually, Kenny draws and wastelands the tropical island after a ponder from Carl, which he shuffled with. What do you think about the move away from Stifle as well? Now, Stifle obviously one that has moved in and out of favor. Yep. Um, Stifle is uh, Stifle and Spellpierce have sort of moved in and out of these decks, sort of alternating, never really being in the same deck together um, in Rug Delver. But Stifle is really one of those cards that is, I want to say you run Stifle so that you can tell the story about how you stifled somebody, um, but it's a little bit more than that. You want to stifle the decks that, that it matters against, uh, and, and Reanimator was a really good deck to be able to stifle. You could stifle a come into play trigger on an Animate Dead, you could stifle a Bristlebrand activation. Um, so we have a Force of Will reveal here from Carl Dillahay being able to blind, or not, did he blind flip? No, he pondered. Did he pawn? Well, in any case, it's a 3-2 Insectile Aberration now, after Kenny has wastelanded both of Carl's lands. He's passing without a third land drop, as is often the case if you get two wastelands. That's another one of those uh, sub-games that you can play if you keep a hand with double wasteland in the mirror. I'm guessing days is uh, Kenny's response to this. Probably if he has it in hand. There it is. Carl needed to keep the creature advantage, so he's trying to get rid of that Delver of Secrets. Still no land for Carl. Beats in for another three, dropping Kenny to 14. Now, how bad is this? Is this the type of thing that Kenny just can't, I mean, that uh, Carl just can't come back from? No. Or is he still alive? Uh, he's still alive, especially because Kenny did not, Kenny, well, obviously doesn't have red mana here. He does, uh, did not flip his Delver. If Carl draws even one land, most of the, almost every spell in his deck, save for Tarmogoy, costs one mana. So, uh, and, and scavenging news, but other than those five cards out of Carl's deck, if he gets one land, he can, he can activate any of his spells. So he did miss another land drop, Kenny is at 11. This possibly could be digging for a, uh, a red mana source, because he does have a land in hand, but it isn't, it's another tropical island. So he might be looking for a red to be able to take down the human insect on the other side of the table. Also good for, for being able to flip Delver next turn. Rumbling in for two. Does Kenny have any chance of just winning this race? Oh yeah, absolutely has a chance of winning this race. I mean, without even killing the insect? Like, without if he doesn't killing... find any red mana? Yeah, well, uh, I assume this Brainstorm set up his Delver this turn, there it is, to be able to flip. So he can theoretically just trade next turn, especially if Carl has nothing, no more lands. Um, in addition, Kenny can play some spells to be able to get up to Threshold, or play this Tarmogoyf that he also has in his hand. I imagine he's going to ponder, though, looking for either a red source or a fetch land of some kind. It's probably considering the possibility of uh, a 
with Charma Boy for right now instead. Yeah. Like, is that is that a winning play? Does he uh, just, I think that Kenny is very winning? far ahead at this point because of the two wastelands. Um, and Carl being unable to find a third. Because if he just plays Tarmogoyf, if he just plays it safe, does he just win next turn? If he attacks for four, putting Carl to ten, he plays his Tarmogoyf. His Tarmogoyf can go up to sorcery, instant, land, uh, no creature though, right? No creature. Sorcery it's a slightly instant. dangerous play though, because, oh, I guess if he doesn't attack with the insect, then this is a slightly more conservative play. Yeah. So he can play the Tarmogoyf only attacking with Nimble Mongoose. Yep, that's what he's going to do. Have Force of Will uh, back up. But if he had attacked with both and he dropped down to five after the attack, then Carl could theoretically have gone land, bolt, bolt without having to attack for the rest of the game. Hmm. Carl still unable to find another land? No, he has one. Oh, does he? He drew it this turn, Volcanic Island. Ah, he does. So that changes things a little bit. Now he doesn't have any red cards. So, so no bolt on the insect. This turn. And the Turbo Wife is a 3-4, making it just a little too big. Yep. So even if he had the red mana, it wouldn't be a winning proposition to, to kill the, uh, the But he does have enough library. life, he could theoretically dig and find, like, he, what he really needs is to play a Tropical Island and a Turbo Wife is of his own, right? Yes. So the insects are going to trade. Both are going to hit the bin. Which makes Kenny's Tarmogoyf even bigger. Yes. Makes hmm. it one bigger. Also brings Nimble Mongoose up to the point where it will soon be a 3-3. Three, three. Carl's going to play another Delver of Secrets and pass. Oh, he's not going to pass. It's going to get Force of Willed, dropping Kenny to 7. But with Carl having no board presence save for a Volcanic Island, it still seems like a winning play. Looking for uh, red mana, presumably. Uh, if he has a red mana, well, it's going to be two turns regardless of whether he finds a red mana or not. Um, because okay. he's probably, if he, if, he put, if he grows the mongoose again. Well, he already has. The ponder is the seventh card. Oh, is it? Ah, it is, yes. So he's attacking for seven this turn. Yeah. So that would leave Carl at six. So even if he finds a bolt, it would still be a he would still have to untap next turn. Mm -hmm. Or if he finds the Scalding Tarmogoyf. Now the advantage here is, of course, now if Carl, even if Carl plays a Tarmogoyf this turn, the Bolt plus Mongoose is good for six. Yes. And this is probably going to be all she wrote. Yep. And then go That's on to game two. end of the game. So Kenny Caster is going to win game one against Carl Dillahay. If you're just joining us, my name is Ruben Bressler. I'm here with Patrick Chapin. We are in round seven of eight here at Star City Games uh, Buffalo, hashtag SCGNY. If you want to join in the conversation on Twitter, or you can tweet at us, at SCG Live. Uh, we are watching a Rug Delver mirror this round. Definitely capable of some real good games. That one, a little less interactive, that a but, little less interactive. but uh, that just is the power of Wasteland. I mean, sometimes you're gonna get some free wins that way, exactly and sometimes right. you're gonna get some automatic losses as a result of playing with only, uh, with uh, only set, lands. yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know, is it 12, 18, and yep, both players are playing 18 lands. So looking at the sideboards, I see Kenny has a life from the loam, which will almost certainly come in in this matchup because the mana can be such a huge deal. Uh, he's also got a, one scavenging ooze to be able to bring in to fight off opposing creatures. And the four submerge. You can break, you can break out open the Tarmogoy from here. Yes, it can. And four submerge also for Kenny. Yeah, both players, I believe. Oh uh, no, uh, Carl only has three submerge. The submerge, a very, very powerful weapon here. Yes. Um, red elemental blast, another nice one. Yeah, Carl has red elemental blast. Kenny has pyro blast. Now one of them's better than the other one, and I forget which one it is and why. I <laughs> well, think it's there's differences. You can... There's differences. Yeah. Like for instance, if you think your opponent's playing skulking ghost, okay, then pyro blast is good. If you think your opponent's playing Phantasmal Image, if you, Storm Seeker, I guess Phantasmal Image isn't a good example, but sure. Phantasmal Image is actually a good example. Is it? It changes color, right? Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, that's actually one of the best possible reasons I've heard. Like, it's not nearly as silly as go stalk it's skulking ghost. ghost. Yeah, yeah. Or um, gossamer phantasm. One of the reasons people like Red Elemental Blast is because it's not as it's not misdirected as easily. Ah. However, I see. you can usually Red Blast mis I mean, misdirection is always it's a dicey one for that anyway. For the most part, it's usually not worth the amount of time and energy people put into it. I say play with whichever one you have a black border of, right. and run it. So, what do you think about Carl's uh, Gilded Drake in the sideboard? Usually it's reserved for Reanimator, re yeah. but it can also steal a 5-6 Tarmogoyf, and the Tarmogoyf battle ends up usually being the final game of the sub-games. I mean, it, it's good with Vapor Snag. Yeah. It is good with Vapor Snag. But I don't know, I don't... It's so... It's, I think it's just such that, a dicey, like... That's just too much, you think? Yeah, if your opponent that's submerges too it, far. well, yeah. you're both going to have a million submerges, and if your opponent submerges their own guy, yeah. now, now what have you accomplished? So, I don't, I don't think I would, uh, I don't think I would go the Drake here. So, what are the cards you take out in the Rug Mirror? Um, I see Forked Bolt might come out for Kenny. Uh, yeah. Spell Snare might come out for Kenny since the only thing that it can yeah, reliably okay. counter is a Tarmogoyf or a Scavenging Ooze, I Which, guess. And it's tricky because Tarmogoyf is like the best card. Yeah. I mean, and Spell uh, Pierce. I don't like Force of Will. You, really? But I don't know. I so don't. do you take out Force of Will? I don't know. I don't know anything about this matchup. I don't know anything about this What matchup. I do know is that, that in matchups like this, I often don't like Force of Will. I like trimming down on the number of Force of Wills because uh, you're just running all your cards into each other anyway. Him to Turokin yourself is not always a winning formula. Right. None of the battles are even important. Leading off with a uh, Delver of Secrets for Carl. You know, uh, uh, this is one of the decks that, because the, the margins are so slim, the best players tend to like it because the games are very exciting. Uh, but they can also t uh, steer the game in the direction that they choose. Mm. Um, and so they can make games seem different even if the, the, the games uh, always look very similar like you're brainstorming and pondering and casting the same creatures but the games can sort of turn in different directions. What did you think of Kenny there? He did not crack his Misty Rainforest to cast a Delver of Secrets or a Ponder that was in his hand. Hmm. It's his only land and it seems that he wanted to have like he didn't want to be stuck in a situation where he got wastelanded and could not cast a spell. Yeah that could be. Also, if also that was, is he playing around days? He might be playing around days. If you play around days, then days becomes a completely blank card. You know, and it's only good in the uh, on the draw, really. I imagine Kenny cut some number of days, actually, now that I think about it. Wasteland on the tropical island. Go for Kenny Caster. Carl once again being unable to flip Delver of Secrets. That was a theme for him in the uh, the quarterfinals last night. He was. This seems like a up. crummy theme. Yeah, it's a pretty bad theme. Very top down, but not the best. So looks like they're going to trade Delver of Secrets. Twitter's telling me that you pretty much always sort out force or uh, side out force will in this matchup because the matchup's a lot about two for, or uh, one for ones and so two for one in yourself is a bad a bad idea. Yeah, so. I mean every spell costs one. None of the battles are super important. Yep. And as a result, like pitching two cards to stop somebody else's threat that only costs one mana, not the best way to do it. I'd rather just cut all the force wheels personally. Drew Levin, in fact, because there are so many one for ones in this matchup, Drew Levin says he likes taking the draw. Yeah, I could see it. So days on the nimble, the second nimble mongoose, leaving with Kenny having no permanents in play. Carl has tropical island and nimble mongoose. Kenny pondering. Both players with just a single tropical island. Although Carl has a nimble mongoose to Kenny's ponder on the stack. Yep. It looks like Carl has four cards in his graveyard. Both of these players very practiced with ver ver uh, various Delver decks. Kenny, of course, famous for playing Rug Delver at uh, the Grand Prix in Indianapolis. Carl winning this morning with mono, quote-unquote mono blue Delver. 
uh, and so are very apt to play tempo-based strategies. Sure. And from the looks of it, he likes to play the, whatever the best strategy is. Yeah. Well, the winner of the, uh, the most recent Invitational, Lauren Nolan, played what I call the most boring possible 150 card roster that you can when he played Blue White Delver and, and Rug Delver. But he won, so... Eh, scoreboard. It's, it's an, exactly. It's, an, it's effective. So we're going to flip our Delver, it looks like, with something. Can't nice change of exactly. pace. Yeah. And Submerge on Delver of Secrets. I like it. Submerge is a very powerful card in this matchup. It's even better in the Maverick uh, matchup, but uh, it's, it certainly has its applications here as well. Um, not only getting rid of a threat on the table, but also forcing Kenny to draw something next turn that he doesn't really want to draw most of the time. Rumbling in for four damage, sending Kenny to 12. Carl's at 19. Kenny says he wants that Delver of Secrets, as a matter of fact, and then he'll pass. Deciding not to shuffle away with uh, Misty Rainforest. There's a shot of Carl Dillahay, Syracuse native, playing here in Buffalo. He spent uh, a couple years moving to different... Oh, a second submerged, jeez. He spent a, a couple of years uh, moving around the country. I believe he was in Florida at one point. I remember playing against him during Lorwyn Block PTQ season in Ohio. Uh, and he lived around, around the... I want to say the Akron area. I'm not sure, though. He lived in Ohio, and I remember playing against him several times. And that's threshold for Carl Dillahay. Nimble Mongoose becoming a 3-3. Three, three. Jenny's life total dropping precariously low at this point, right? Yeah, if, if he attacks here and Kenny has no responses, Kenny will drop down to six. I believe Carl has a lightning bolt in hand. And if Kenny wants to ever activate this fetch land, that puts Kenny at a virtual two life. And another Delver of Secrets. That's his third this game, I think. So I gotta say I gotta think this is pretty much insurmountable pressure. Kenny's gonna go to five here. Game one showcasing the power of Wasteland. This one I think showcasing the power of uh, of uh, submerge in sideboarded games. So does he need to brainstorm and find multiple submerges? Is that what's happening right here? You know, I I guess that's the case. Oh, well, Spell Pierce is going to put a stop to that. Now Kenny could daze if he so chooses. He does not have another land in hand, so being able to replay the land that he would bring back with Days would not be terrible. So he's going to be able to resolve the brainstorm. Finds another Days, Ponder, and Volcanic Island. What's he looking for here? Just I cheap don't, interaction? No. Like submerge and lightning bolt. The problem is, of course, that Mongoose has got, a, has got him dead in two hits anyway. Well, he's going to play Tarmogoyf here, I would think. Yep, there's Tarmogoyf. So the Tarmogoyf can hold off the Mongoose. A couple if he submerges. Flips, if he flips this Delver Secrets, it's game over. And I believe that it's game over anyway. Oh, he flipped something. So All right, so we're on to game, game three. The power of Submerge. Yep, there you go. Bro, I've never really liked Rug Delver personally. It's not my style of deck. But uh, because it's so mana hungry. Like, there's only three actual colored mana sources in the deck. Three Volcanic Island, three Tropical Island for Kenny, and uh, four Tropical Island, three Volcanic Island for Carl. I just, I, I don't know. I don't like it pers personally. That's just mine, my taste. Now, I, I got the, it's not me, but I got a friend who, uh, who likes the Rug Delver. No, it's, it's and... probably the best deck in the format. It's just not for me. Nah, dude, I don't know. This deck is like, 
good. Yeah. But it's, I don't know it's, if it's great. No, it's not. It certainly isn't great, but it's a deck that really good players like because it's about it's 50% against the field. Oh yeah. And you th and it, as a good player who's confident in themselves, if you play a deck that's 50% against the field, all those little margins can lead up to winning pretty much any game. You have a chance in any any matchup and a chance in any game. What about Tom Martell style Esper? That's where, are the one. where are the lingering souls at? Well, I always say that Esper Stoneblade is like 45% against the field, <laughs> as opposed to Rug Delver that's 50% against the field. So I, I don't, I, I'm not the one to ask about that. But yeah, the lingering souls really sort of disappeared uh, from uh, from Legacy. Even the Esper Stoneblade decks aren't really uh, 100, uh, not 100% of them are running lingering souls. They're pretty much just running black for. Maybe discard like a spells, little discard or graveyard. A little discard, maybe a little graveyard hate, maybe a vindicate, something like that. But a lot of them aren't even running lingering souls. Dude, why don't we bring it back? Why don't you and I bring vindicate back? We bring the four like people playing like just four vindicates in their deck. I like it. Why isn't vindicate just like isn't that card just awesome? I want a snapcaster mage of vindicate. Yes, that it's sounds a little, like a fun time. It's a little vulnerable to spell pierce, but what is it? Sure. I guess I guess if we're giving our opponents spell peers on turn five, then uh, then that's not the greatest thing in the world. But on turn five, because we're snapcaster and vindicate. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Or if we're playing around spell peers, we're casting it on turn five. So what what do you think, what do you make of these vapor snags? Is this I like a vapor trend? Snag. Is this a trend that you think is going to catch on? Yeah, I think so. I like vapor snag a lot. Just like in standard, where unsummon isn't good enough, but vapor snag is. Uh, the one extra life is is just just relevant enough that it matters. I actually saw Vapor Snags in a, a Merfolk list um, either a week or two ago that I thought were very good in that deck as well, which because I, I thought that it put it put the the Merfolk deck a little bit over the top of the Maverick decks. Whereas I thought it was the other way around without the inclusion of Vapor Snag because Knight of the Reliquary is so big but doesn't come down until turn three. Um, I think that Vapor Snag has a, has a chance to be a card in, in Legacy, which is very surprising considering uh, pretty much nobody saw it coming. Like it was very unheralded, unheralded when it was released. Uh, I've heard people from Wizards say that they didn't think about it when they were uh, testing their blue-white Delver decks. That was not in their lists, I should say. Kenny's going to lead off with Tropical Island off of a Misty Rainforest in Game 3. And Nimble Mongoose. I think Nimble Mongoose is probably the best of the three creatures, um, of the, the more commonly played three creatures in the Rug Mirror. What do you think about no Snapcaster Mages anymore? Nobody plays them in Rug anymore, right? Yeah, well, the thing about Rug is that it's so mana-hungry, as we were discussing earlier. It only has six colored mana sources and four wastelands that are likely not staying in play very long. Um, that you can't really ever Snapcast even a Lightning Bolt reliably. You just don't get up to three enough. Well, Carl didn't have his third land in game one until it was well beyond mattering. Last round, Kenny only had two lands in play at any given time because Days and uh, a Wasteland from Carl. So, unless you're going trying to go slightly bigger, then uh, then Snapcaster Mage just isn't a reliable uh, thing to be able to do. Now, in decks like Esper Stoneblade, when you're running 22 or 23 lands, that's much more, more realistic, realistic. To, uh, to hit that. Yeah. And also in those decks, you're snap casting back much more bigger impact spells. Whereas Rug Delver, it's the it's the uh, critical mass of spells that matter. Um, things like Swords to Plowshares and Inquisition of Kozilek out of Esper Stoneblade can by themselves take over a game. Whereas a Lightning Bolt or a Spell Pierce by itself or a Brainstorm, as Kenny is casting right here. Uh, aren't going to take over a game by themselves. That isn't to say that you don't ever snap cast a brainstorm out of Esper Stoneblade, but you know, it's, it just so happens that there are more things that you can do. So what is it that both players are doing right now? They've got two. They've each got Nimble Mongoose, and they're both obviously looking to just manipulate their library. But what are they trying to set up? I mean, it seems like it's a real tempo struggle. But are they? Are, is Tarmogoyf the key card you're looking for? Tarmogoyf is usually the key card you're looking for because 
even though Nimble Mongoose is very important, as both players have one, um, it gets too small. When, when somebody plays, when somebody plays a Tarmor Wolf, you know, sure. with, you know, you bring out a knife. That's pretty scary. But then a couple turns later, somebody brings a gun, and it's not as scary anymore. It's still a little scary, especially if they have a knife and a gun. Sure. If you have a nimble and or a, a gun Tarmor that Wolf. shoots knives. Right. That'd be that'd be incredible. So I'm surprised there isn't a legacy deck called Knife Shooting Gun. Like the way that legacy, <laughs> yeah, the way the legacy decks. works. Yeah, in Legacy's long and illustrious tradition of naming decks absurd, ridiculous things that have nothing to do with the deck. Yeah, this is my knife shooting gun. Yep. It's uh, it uses it's counter like, spells and white removal. Yeah. It also has white miracles in it. I knife think shooting it, gun. I think a knife shooting gun would probably have a deck that, or have a Isochron scepter in it. Okay. That, that would be the gun. Sure. And then the knife you would shoot would be whatever. Whatever card you consider to be knife. Yeah. Yes. All right. So Carl's going to Thought Scour here. I presume it's going to be himself. Kenny's debating whether or not to daze this. Now, the reason to daze this is because Thought Scour is pretty much thought, uh, uh, threshold in a can. He's going to go from just two cards in his graveyard up to five, and it's much easier to be able to get to threshold. And since Kenny's on the play, he wants to keep the threshold advantage, basically. He'll be the first one Very to get, tempo oriented. First one to get to a 3-3. Three, three. That's a sub game that they're playing. They're playing the Nimble Mongoose, who's going to be the first one to get a 3-3 sub-game here. Yes. Who is on first? That's right. Who is on threshold first? I think it's I think it's adorable that Thought Scour sees play in Legacy. It's not incorrect. Adorable. It's a very good card. But it is, to me, that's just my... Because it's a card. It's so unassuming of a card, you know? It it's is just, definitely much better than Mental Note, too. It is. Or at and, least better than Mental Note. I mean, Mental Note saw its day in the sun. Um, and it was played in Canadian Threshold decks. Um, Player of the Year Owen, Owen Turnwald had to face it in the uh, the finals of... Th wait, did Owen... No, Owen was playing Goblins in that one. But yeah. I think, I think the one of the decks in the top eight of that Flash PT was playing... Was playing Mental Note? Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me. That card... That card's pretty good. Brainstorm is going to get dazed from Carl. I don't think that's fair that Kenny gets to resolve his white border brainstorms while Carl gets to uh, has to have his black bordered ones get countered. That doesn't seem fair to me. That's the thing. Life is not fair. Yep. Next question. <laughs> there was a I forget um, who originally said. I think it might have been Dave Williams on Twitter said that white bordered blood moons should have no effect on black border dual lands. <laughs> sure. I think was very clever. Of course, Dave Williams would say that, but. I still think that it's an interesting, uh, interesting idea that would never happen in real life, but it's very funny. Dude, City in a Bottle is legal. That's true, City in a Bottle is legal. Like, all kinds of crazy stuff like that happens. As is Apocalypse Chimes, although no one plays any Homelands cards. So, Wasteland on Tropical Island is going. The good news for Carl is that now he has Threshold. The bad news is, so does Kenny, and now he has no lands. So these three threes are going to trade. So that thus endeth the Nimble Mongoose sub-game. And as is often the case in the Rugged Elver Mirror, we're in like turn three or four, and no one has any permanents in play. <laughs> They've just all traded. You know, yeah, it's I, a game of attrition, really. Absolutely. But both players' life totals dipping. Slightly. Into the sub-19s. Jeez. Kenny's going to play Volcanic Island and pass. Carl's going to have no land yet again. And Waste so land Kenny, is a cruel, cruel mistress. That's true. Kenny's going to have two lands before Carl's going to have any. Brainstorm here is going to find Ponder, Land, and... A fetch land. Uh, Thought Scour, I think, is the other, the third card. Already with Days in hand. And a second ponder. Uh, Paul Niccolo piloted 17 land rug with four stifle, no wastelands at All Grand right. Prix Columbus. That All was right. the deck you were referring to. Absolutely. Kenny's going to find Tropical Island here, presumably to play another green creature. 
or to play one of his many cantrips in hand. One of the big advantages of the Nimble Mongoose is the ability to sidestep this entire submerged subgame, right? Yes. The, yeah, that's why Nimble Mongoose is, is one of the more important uh, uh, creatures in the matchup if you can get up to it um, and not have your opponent find one because it dodges all of the red base to removal and if you can resolve it early, it's, it's good for, I would say, some, it's, it's good for some number of, some amount of damage before Tarmogoyf can even come down. At which is point, it, you can counter oh, Tarmogoyf. Is it 9.8 damage? Is that correct? I don't think 9.8 damage is, is possible. <laughs> I could be wrong. Dude, I, I'm sure there's some little girl math. That can there's little girl math, I believe, that like, you I can don't get know to 9.8. The exact combos, you have to, if you, get, if you hit your opponent with little girl 17 times and then cast Beacon of Immortality on your opponent. No, that doesn't work. That's no, no, bad. No, no. They need to lose half their life. And be at a half of some kind. Then we'll we'll work on the math. We'll figure that one out. Kenny uh, is going to Thoxcow. He finds the life from the loam, which is very interesting. He does have a wasteland in his graveyard. So, even though Carl managed to find a, a land, he has nothing to play with it or chooses not to play anything with it, Dude, perhaps. Dude, Unhinged doesn't even work right anymore. Now that there's no mana burn, yeah. all those cards that get, like, tapped to give yourself one and a half mana, sure, don't mind if I do. Yep. And then just burn for a half a mana. One of the uh, one of the better cards I've played with in cubes is City of Ass, yes. which taps to add one and a half, yeah. because you can play it on turn one and then condescend for one and a half on turn two. <laughs> So that, that's a fun one. Your opponent almost always flips the table when that happens. So Kenny is going to life from the loam here. Uh, Carl is going to spell pierce that. And Kenny is going to daze the spell pierce. And daze from Carl is going to end that. Although Kenny is probably just going to get it right back next turn. Got to tell you, at the Grand Prix, I was messing around with a land tax deck. Yeah. And I had the pleasure of playing against one of these Rugged Elver decks. Let me just tell you, if you are playing a land tax deck and your opponent is playing Rugged Elver, do not have any aspirations of activating land tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys never have any land in no play. No one has any land in play, exactly. Like days, wasteland. The fact that every card in the deck costs one. Right. That's, that's pretty absurd. So, away from the loam. Is going to get spell pierced again, but it's only temporary. I mean, this is this, just a, a, a temporary reprieve. Carl needs to get some pressure down pretty quickly, or he's going to succumb to the life of the lone uh, wasteland lock. Yep. As you so rightly pointed out, very few colored sources in his entire deck. Yep. It does not take many wastelands before it is a wrap. So Carl's able to get a nimble mongoose into play now. Uh, Kenny is going to life from the loam. This time it will resolve and it will get back some lands for him, including a wasteland. Two, Two wastelands, wastelands and a tropical. Carl's going to get wasted. So it's pretty not much in a good way. Up to uh, up to this nimble mongoose to do most of the heavy lifting. Yep, and he's going to drop Kenny to 14. Now it is a five-turn clock, which is not insignificant. That's true, and and uh, Kenny only has. Four Tarmogoyf, four Nimble Mongoose, four Delver Secrets as answers now, because obviously you can't get hit by burn spells because it's a shroud creature. Yeah. And uh, he's already got one of his Nimble Mongooses in the graveyard. So, you know. So Carl's just playing out his land despite his opponent having a wasteland. Yeah. That's Is this a, little... a signal that he just wants to go bolt you, taste it? I think so. I think that's probably what's, uh, what's happening. Or there's a Delver. Oh, Delver. He's committing even more. He wants to get as much pressure down as he can. Well, with with, totally with his opponent now having the life from below advantage, uh, he needs to put as much pressure on the board as he possibly can. The problem is, Kenny has a Tarmogoyf, it looks like, to me. And he also has Forked Bull, which is going to deal one to Carl and one to the Delver of Secrets before it can flip into a 3-2 uh, flying wild Nakatl. Three more damage into Kenny, although things are not looking good for Carl. Yeah, he misses another land drop. The clock is at four. Now, one interesting uh, interesting little twist here. If Carl doesn't find an island, he can't submerge this Tarmogoyf. Ah, yeah, that's true. Wow. 
And he has no basics in his deck, right? Does he have? He has submerge in hand. I think I just saw it flip past it. And he has. He has no basics. Wow. So ponder from Kenny Caster. I don't know why people don't like watching this. This is actually very interactive magic. This is very skill intensive. Magic. I hear a lot of people complain about uh, watching Rug on camera, and I think it's very, very fascinating. Delver of any kind, people don't like watching on camera. I think it's just because Delver's good. Branding. I think it's poor branding on the part, on of, the part of Delver's Delver. Secrets Lobby. Delver needs to get better, uh, a better, a better uh, PR marketing. Yeah. You know, they got to hire the Mad Men. You telling me Don Draper couldn't make couldn't sell Delver? Oh, absolutely. Don Draper could sell anything. Deciding how big Tarmogoyf is. Creature big sorcery instant land. Oh, Kenny says taste it. Yep. He's gonna rumble in because he's got a nimble mongoose of his own in hand. This Carl. is a real bad spot for Carl. This is real bad for Carl. Kenny now with four lands in play. The most of any Rug Delver player in the history of the format. Carl's gonna rumble in, putting Kenny to eight. Kenny choosing not to block. He's in full-on race mode now that he's got more than twice as much power in play as Carl. Double Lightning Bolt also in Kenny's hand. So, so he could theoretically just kill Carl right now, which I believe is going to happen. Carl has uh, demonstrated that he does not have Force of Will in hand because he would have Force of Will being uh, Tarmogoyf. Unless he's drawn it in the last two turns. Life from the loam, just breaking open this mirror. And that's the and that's, that's the, the hand. game. So Kenny Caster is going to move on to the six fight. and one. Carl Delhay is going to drop to five and two, probably knocking out him out for being in contention to uh, go back to back Jerry Thompson style. <laughs> but Kenny's still very much alive. Well played match. It was kind of, it was, it was definitely exciting. It's unfortunate that Carl got locked out on mana in game one. Game two, at least Kenny had set up the life from the loam, and that That's was very true, clearly yeah. part of his sideboard plan. Yep. I mean, Carl doesn't actually have life from the loam in his sideboard either.